Uh, I'm Jeff Randall. I am on the advisory board for CFI DC, uh, and I'm just a random person who decided to speak about something he knows nothing about. <laughs> uh, today I'm going to talk about the origins of conspiracy theories, not getting too much into specific conspiracies, just kind of what are the mental processes that lead to believing crazy shit. Uh, things like the New World Order, things like 9-11 Truth, um, uh, the fact that the presidents have all been reptilian aliens, or uh, that one's actually not a conspiracy theory, that's true. Um, uh, chemtrails, who shot JFK. Um, I don't believe any of these things, but I find them absolutely fascinating because you're taking real world events and you're just making crap up. Um, like, uh, and, and I love trying to think about, is there some way that these things could be true? Uh, if Lee Harvey Oswald didn't shoot JFK, who did? How many people had to know about it? Um, and you start getting into things like, if the Apollo moon landings were faked, if you if you look at it all, it means that about a quarter of a million people had to be in on it. A quarter of a million people have kept silent for the last 40 years about something that big. That's not going to happen. Uh, and if these conspiracies are able to be this grand, 9-11, it's able to be this grand, how did they leave such obvious proofs? Like there are people who say that there was an episode of The Simpsons uh, the year before 9-11 that Lisa had a 9 and an 11 in some book or something. And it's supposed to prove that Fox News knew that 9-11 was coming. <laughs> so there's this conspiracy to kill thousands of people. Fox News knows about it, but they're going to let it slip on The Simpsons? I, I mean, come on. You don't let that shit slip on The Simpsons. Uh, so what is a conspiracy theory? Uh, in general ideas, it's a pejorative term. When you say conspiracy theory, you're not talking about something like Watergate, which actually was a conspiracy. You're talking about generally things that aren't truly conspiracies or that the conspiracy has been uh, blown up out of proportion. Um, these are virtually always fringe theories. Um, if it's the generally accepted truth, it's generally not going to be called a conspiracy theory. Uh, they're used to explain historical events or current events, things, usually major events, like 9-11 is going to have a conspiracy theory, why my traffic sucked this morning isn't. Um, they're very rarely supported by any conclusive evidence, because if they were supported by evidence, then they wouldn't be conspiracy theories, they'd be reality. Um, and they generally will contrast or contradict the... The, the primary uh, version of events. So if people want to say that Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK, the conspiracy is going to say virtually anybody else, or in some cases, everybody else in the world shot JFK. Um, but why do these things matter? I mean, if, if somebody wants to believe that Bush was in charge of 9-11 or that Dick Cheney was in charge, why does it matter? It's, it matters because it becomes so common in mass media today, and it matters because the more that we allow these types of ideas to spread, the less critical thinking people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, if, if people are constantly referring to the 9-11 truth movement as if it's anything other than insane, you're going to have people who start saying, well, if the government could do 9-11, then they could do this and you kind of end up going down a rabbit hole of insanity. So what are the origins? Uh, there's a few major things. Uh, questioning the official truth, seeing patterns where patterns don't exist, uh, searching for anomalies, um, distrust of a group or uh, some government body, feeling powerless yourself, uh, making shit up, and then <laughs> stopping questioning. And it's interesting that it starts with a questioning and then it ends with stopping questioning. And we'll get into that. Um, 
questioning it generally a conspiracy is going to come from an attempt to answer some question. If people don't want to believe that bin Laden hit 9 started 9-11, then the question is, if he didn't do it, then who? Uh, if somebody wants to believe that uh, the president or some head of state is an alien, well, then if they're an alien, how did they get here? What type of alien? Why is David Icke insane? Uh, things like that. Um, and generally, the idea of questioning is a very good thing. But a lot of questions have answers. And when you find those answers, you don't need to keep asking the same question over and over, especially if your question started off kind of insane. Uh, seeing patterns where none exist. Um, uh, Skeptic Magazine. Uh, who's the guy from Skeptic? Uh, Michael Shermer has a lot of books about this. Uh, the idea of seeing patterns where none exist. We are really, really good at seeing patterns. We look at a tree and we see a face in the tree. We look at uh, a group of people and we'll see some sort of pattern in it. We're very, very good at that. But it can kind of go too far and we see patterns where nothing existed. So we see uh, an event happen on 9-11 where somebody made a stupid comment about we should pull Building 7. Well, a lot of people see that and they see a couple other things that they think are weird and they see all those little teeny things turn into a pattern that to them means clearly George W. Bush had something to do with it or somehow Obama had something to do with it even though nobody knew who he was yet. <laughs> I'm sure that's coming. Uh, the next one is anomaly hunting. So if somebody says something in the heat of a tragedy you're not always thinking straight. You're gonna say stuff that you don't necessarily mean. You're going to say, you're gonna use the wrong words, you're gonna say something that just on further reflection seems a little weird. But when you're actually in the heat of the moment, you're just saying stuff. So when somebody said, pull building seven on 9-11 a couple hours before it fell, they weren't giving an order to destroy the building, they were saying pull the people out of it. They used a poor choice of words maybe. That doesn't mean that 9-11 was a conspiracy. It doesn't mean, and I would love nothing more than to believe George Bush did it because he's a vile human being, and, <laughs> but he didn't. So you, you look at all these little anomalies, um, and in most cases, they're not really anomalies. They're apparent anomalies. So if you think that the towers fell faster than they could fall, and you actually look at it and you talk to scientists and you find out that, no, they really would have fallen at the exact speed that they did because they did fall at the exact speed that they did. Uh, it's, it, you see something that you think is an anomaly, it gets explained to you, and you don't accept that explanation, you're getting towards a conspiracy theory. Distrust of some group. In some cases, these are fully justified. When Hillary Clinton said there was a vast right-wing conspiracy out to get her and her family, there was, it was called Fox News. <laughs> uh, when Tony Blair says we face an aggressive secular attack from without, in some cases he is true because secularists are finally fighting back for the first time virtually ever. He's a little insane in the fact that he thinks it's a bad thing, but there are, there are reasons to distrust groups. There are reasons that people distrust groups that aren't valid, but Distrusting a group, especially a group in power, will tend to lead towards a conspiracy type of mindset. Uh, one of the best examples of this is Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck has an absolute hatred and distrust of anything to do with liberals, progressives, black people, basically anyone who's not white and him, or paying him, <laughs> or listening to him. A few